Okay, 1.2, exploring absolute value. When we explore absolute value, we need to remember what absolute value function is. This here, folks, is the absolute value function. f at x is equal to two lines with x in between means absolute value of x. Now, this is known as the absolute value function because it's in function notation. Now, determine to determine the absolute value of a number, you look at the number and not the sign. So, for example, if I want you to do absolute of, let's say, negative 2, sorry, one second, absolute of negative 2, let's say, that means the answer is just going to equal 2. All right, knowing that, let's keep moving. The absolute value represents the distance from zero on a number line. So when I take the absolute of a number, how far is that number away from zero? And that's the distance. Now the graph of the absolute function has the domain x belongs to real and the range of y belongs to real such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Very similar to the parabola. Now. When we look at an absolute value function, it actually is the pieces of two lines. It is known as a piecewise linear function. It has two pieces of two lines. And this, these two lines, one is going to be y equals x, so it's going to be this one right here. The second one is y equals negative s. That's there. And what that means is that x and negative x are two different lines that are representative of the absolute function. Now let's look at the graph. We look at the graph of an absolute function. Okay, we have one line which goes from here to here, and this is the negative x line in that specific domain from negative infinity to zero. This is the x line. This here is the, sorry, y equals negative x line. And then over here, this is the y equals x line from zero to infinity. So when y is greater than zero, it's this line answer. When y is less than zero, it's this answer. So let's go back to the previous page. And you look at the equation looking like this. Okay, the two equations here on the bottom. If x is greater than or equal to zero, it's x. It's less than z is zero, it's negative x. All right, next. Seeing the graph, and there it is, folks. Let's go on to the next part. Example one: graph the absolute of x less is less than eight, and the absolute of x is greater than or equal to two on a number line. So you're going to graph them on two separate number lines, please. The first one. Absolute of x is less than 8. Now, there are some rules about graphing on a number line, and those are there must be at least 7 ticks, and you have to use a proper scale, and make sure that the number that you're putting the open circle or closed circle at is clearly visible and determined. So, we have the numbers. Here we go. Lots of numbers, folks. We put an open circle at both 8 and negative 8. Why is that the case? Well, when you look at the question, it says the absolute of x is less than 8. What number do you take the absolute of to give you 8? Well, that would be 8 or even negative 8, both of those. Now, why do they have an open circle above them? Why is that circle not colored in? Why is it not closed? Well, you have to look at this over here. This means less than. It is not less than or equal to, it means strictly less than. So in this case, we're going to have an open circle above the 8. Now what numbers are less than, are, are, is it true where absolute of x is less than 8? Well, if I take the absolute of 10, that gives me 10. Is that less than 8? Well, the answer is no. But if I take this number, 6, and I take the absolute of 6, I get 6 which is less than 8, so I know that my graph is going to go this way. Let's go over here. Is the graph going to go this way? Well, let's check. Absolute of negative 10 is positive 10. That is not less than negative 8. 
So not less than eight. Absolute of negative six is six. That is less than eight. So folks, we have to draw the line between the two dots. All right, the next one. Absolute of x is greater than or equal to two. What does that mean? Well, minimum of seven ticks. There we go. At two, we're going to put a closed circle. And at negative two, we're going to put a closed circle. It's closed because it could be equal to it. And it's at two and negative two because we're talking about the absolute value. So the absolute value of two and negative two is going to equal two. What about what values are greater? Let's look on either side. Absolute value of three is three. That is true then, it is greater than two. But on this side, absolute value of one is negative one. It is not true in this case. So we're actually going to have the graph extend from here and go out. The same is true for the other side. Okay, and this is what we have. We have the two graphs extending from either side in opposite directions. So sometimes it's inclusive, sometimes it's exclusive. And now this is something that you need to understand and spend some time with. Now here comes the hard part. I could change this question up to look at the following. Are you ready? So again, we want to find out what values of the absolute is between 2 and 8, including the 2 but not the 8. How do you draw it? knowing that you know each and every individual piece. Because x, absolute of x, is greater than or equal to 2, but absolute of x is also less than 8. What does that mean? Well, folks, let's look and see what the graph says. We find out that this is what the graph is doing. The reason why this is true over here is because, remember, 2 is inclusive, so we have 2 and negative 2, and it has to be greater than the 2 and the negative 2, but less than the 8, just like it says right here. Greater than or equal to 2 or negative 2, but less than 8. So these are the values that we're looking for. Cool. All right, next. Example number 2. Determine the transformation of the graph of f at x is equal to the absolute value of minus x plus 5, and then minus 4. So you're asked to describe the transformations. You cannot describe the trans transformations as they are. The reason why is you must remember the following hint. That's right, folks. The coefficient of x must always be 1 when describing or graphing by transformations. So this negative right here has to be pulled up. We have to pull them up before we do anything else. So f at x is equal to negative bracket x minus 5 because we're pulling out a negative out of here and here. So we have negative x bracket x minus 5. If I expanded this right here, folks, we would actually get this. So not ever fear. It is actually the same equation. And now what we're going to do is we are going to describe it. So what happened? Well, the basic is the absolute function. You do need to recognize the basic, even though you were told you were given it in the question, I want you to repeat it. So describe the basic. The basic is the absolute function, y equals uh, absolute x. And we need to describe the different pieces. So there is a horizontal reflection. Why is there a horizontal reflection? That would be this, folks. This negative right here indicates there must be a horizontal reflection. Now we go inside the brackets and we find out that it translation to the right 5 and a translation of down 4. Remember, inside the brackets that directly affects the x is opposite of what you see. Outside, it's exactly the same for the y values. It's exactly as you see it. For the x, it becomes a bit tricky because what we're trying to do is essentially get back to x. To get back to x, we need a positive 5. That's all we're really doing. Don't worry about it. We're not going to have to work with that. All right. Well, that's the end of this video, folks. And um, you have a good night. Take care. Bye.